December of 2020, US-based Amiga fanatic and inventor David Dunkley surprised the Amiga world by releasing a hardware product designed specifically for the Amiga 1000. He called it the Parcero. The Parcero gave an intentional nod to the Amiga's hardware of the past while updating the experience with modern internals wrapped in an elegant form factor. It brought a whopping and truly fast 8 megabytes of contemporary autoconfig SRAM, a large step up from old DRAM. It also delivered a new clock with an easy to change and long lasting coin cell battery. A few Amiga 1000 fans were already wiping away tears of joy at that point. Finally, and most importantly, the Parcero opened the door to large modern hard drives in the form of a removable micro SD card with storage up to four gigabytes. The one caveat, Parcero required a boot disk just like hard drive solutions from the 1980s. Owners needed to create a kickwork disk that would pass control over to the Parcero's SD card during boot up. Once done, the disk could be popped out and placed to the side. The Parcero's micro SD was just infinitely quieter, smaller, cooler, used very little energy, and could hold gobs more storage. We should also take a moment to appreciate the Parcero's ingenious form factor. Most Amiga SD or Compact Flash solutions are hidden inside a computer's case, thus making them a challenge to quickly and easily access. The Parcero was designed from the beginning for easier file transfers between modern PCs and Mac computers without taking up any additional space on your desk. The original Parcero was something like a new artificial intelligence art program had created after being fed prompts for an Amiga storage solution. It was that bizarre and that amazing. The fact is that the chips required to build the Parcero are no longer available. The Parcero is officially unobtainium tech now and already a thing of the past as of December 2022. However, Mr. Dunkley has been very busy over the past year, working on Parcero 2. New Features Fully auto-config, and while it lacks a pass-through connector, most folks won't care. Fully auto-booting, and the SD card is removable. The device driver is 8 kilobytes in size and is stored within a 2 megabyte user flashable ROM. The driver, Parcero.device, is automatically loaded at boot by the Amiga. You can actually pop the SD out after the Amiga has booted if you want to, although I wouldn't recommend it. User flashable ROM. Guys, this is where the real magic happens. Parcero 2 can provide multiple kickstarts via its flashable ROM chip. Users can now use a physical switch to choose between their kickstart of choice. This means I can boot off three different hard drives, and each one can be a unique workbench experience with multiple partitions on each. Mine is configured to boot 1.3, 2.0, or 3.1 depending on my needs and each version of Workbench is broken into multiple drives. There's even a fourth global drive that each Workbench can see that I can use for file transfers between my modern computer and the Parcero's multiple platforms. It's amazing. The I.O. is very peppy now. The CPLD allows us to go from an 8-bit interface to a 16-bit interface for the SD read transactions. The Parcero 2 is rigid disk block aware. It will load all file systems from the RDB and mount and boot partitions automatically. SD Toolbox. This custom software tool written by Dunkley is an OS 1.3 compatible hard drive partitioning tool similar to Commodore Amiga's Kickstart 2.x HD Toolbox. It is specifically designed to partition micro SD cards used by the Parcero 2 and can easily work with large, greater than 4 gigabyte SD cards. It also provides the means to set up the RDB and an MBR to allow fat partitions to be viewable on Macs and PCs. Better ergonomics. 
There's a notch on the back to keep the Parcero from being inserted upside down, which would be bad. There's also a horizontal stabilizer brace on the back now too. And the SD card is way easier to insert and remove. The CPLD is still just 16-bit. The 68,000 bus is only 16-bit. And the original Amiga driver was 32-bit. But the Parcero 2 is NSD TD64 compliant. That means its driver is now 64-bit, just like your phone. It can access 2 to the 64th power, which equals 16 petabytes. However, the data partition on your Percero's SD is 11 gigabytes, for example, and uses PFS3 on Kickstart 1.3. Performance Comparisons Sysinfo does a direct and sequential read to a device in question. The real truth is how well a device can handle directories and files that are spread around a disk, possibly fragmented all over the place. Dunkley wrote two small programs that put a device through its paces and then measures that instead. Why? Because he cares about real-world measurable facts, not just numbers on a screen. We all use sysinfo numbers to compare this and that, and it is a very helpful tool. But the numbers aren't a true reflection of a given device's actual performance. SD Workout writes 200 16 kilobyte files and then reads those 200 files using the file system routines to manage them, like in the real world. SD Workout 2 does the same thing but in 64 kilobyte chunks. The programs delete the files when the tests are complete, after the results are shown. It looks like we're as fast as we can go as far as interface is concerned. Hardware Modification Requirements Option 1. No Rejuvenator In order for the Parcero 2 to provide Kickstart ROM to the A1000, two PAL chips, Programmable Array Logic, not to be confused with the video standard Phase Alternating Line, which shares the same acronym, must be replaced and a wire must be added. This modification is possible to be performed to either NTSC machines with a daughter board or non-NTSC machines that lack them. Everyone wins. Option 2. With a rejuvenator. If you have a rejuvenator installed in your Amiga 1000, at a minimum you enjoy 1 or 2 megabytes of chip RAM and a Kickstart ROM. If you were to acquire a Parcero 2, the only thing you'd have to do is remove the original Kickstart ROM chip and check your jumpers. That's it. The only issue I ran into with the Parcero 2 was the combination of my 14 MHz ad speed accelerator. For some reason it would lock my system up, which is strange because some other ad speed users have no issues at all. Something about the timing is just slightly cranky. However, if I were to upgrade to a 68010, I could increase my already stellar I.O. reads and writes from 10 to 20%. It's an option. David Dunkley said, for me, it's all about my personal understanding, learning, and nostalgia. I've learned a ton over the last year and got to relive some good moments with some new friends. If I were to sum up the differences between Parcero 1 and Parcero 2, it's the addition of auto boot, speed, and better fit function. For those willing to make a modification to the internals of the Amiga, you also get three user selectable, flashable kickstarts in ROM. The Parcero is a hobby. There are no current plans to produce these in large volumes. Parts are difficult to acquire, and time is limited. The fun from David's perspective is in the journey itself. And from that standpoint, take it from me. This journey is worth taking. It's amazing. So remember, guys, keep that Amiga love flowing, and we'll see you next time. Amiga Love.